Today we're going to talk about what's known as extended techniques. Now, the sort of definition of an extended technique is something that goes beyond the normal sort of technique to create new and or different sounds with whatever instrument you have. It's nothing new. There are extended techniques in much of classical music, even in some uh, fairly older pieces where the instrument might be playing out of its range or creating different sort of noises in that. Certain things that we've uh, probably heard before are woodwind players getting key clicks where they get that a loud click sound in addition to their note or maybe um, odd harmonics or things like that, false harmonics or things. Percussion is specifically known for extended techniques because half of what we do is some sort of different technique than what's designed for the instrument. Extended techniques have really come into prominence in the last century, first in percussion music, especially John Cage. He had uh, all sorts of different things in his early percussion music, his imaginary landscapes, credo, different things like that. Plus then Cage came up with the prepared piano where he put screws and rubber and bolts and things in between and on the piano strings to modify the sound and get more of a percussive character out of the piano. And then when we come back to later of the last century, uh, modern jazz, avant-garde music, musicians playing all kinds of crazy stuff, and especially percussionists doing all sorts of different things to get new sounds. So we're going to look at a couple different things with the gongs and then maybe some, some other metal things. One of the first ones, well, first, I'm going to use a Peisty Planet Venus gong. It's 24 inches in diameter. I like it because it's small, fairly lightweight, easy to move, and it's got a great sound. But we're going to use this for the demonstration. One technique I like to do is a vibrato technique, and this works with a small gong because you can get it to move side to side like this just by hitting it. And if you can hear that, you get that sort of wah wah sound. Wah 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 wah. So that's one way you can do it, even with a softer mallet. Let's just get the straight tone for comparison. Another way to get vibrato is with a handheld gong. I'm going to use a Peisty 22 inch accent gong, and this works really well. And just hit the gong. One way is to shake it. I like to do this a lot with a small handheld gong. use it all the time but it makes a nice effect it makes a nice change of tone another thing you can do is muffling the gong I do this in various pieces grabbing the edge get a very short sound or even putting your hand across that I wrote called Shadow World 
where it's it's for a muted gong. I usually use a 32 inch earth gong, but it uses open and close of the hand to get different tones, open tones and short tones. I'll just play a little part of that. Still another sort of technique I like to use is having different things rattle on the gong while I play it. This is a small lightweight wooden knitting needle and I can rest that against the gong. Just the tip, getting a real light bounce on the face of the gong. Or there's a little ridge right here, it might be hard to see. I can have the shaft or the stick vibrating on that. control by how much pressure I put on the stick here. I can let it bounce very loosely or tighten up my grip so it doesn't move as much. Here's real loose. Now I'll tighten it up. So there's an extended technique, using a stick or something against the gong. We can put other objects on the gong, other types of sticks. Here's just a, a drum stick. Again, I can vary the sound by the pressure of the stick on the gong and in my grip. Let's try another mallet here. This is a poly PVC mallet. Also use things like chains hanging on the gong to get a rattling sound. Uh, I have a couple gongs with extra holes that I can put rivets in, just like a sizzle cymbal, get a, a sizzle sound out of it. So different things like that against the gong. Another thing I like to do is use different types of sheet metal. Not necessarily on the gong, but in conjunction with the gong. Here's a, just a nice thin piece of probably sheet aluminum, tin, whatever, from a construction site, but these are great. You get a lot of different sound effects out just by rattling and moving the metal, but in conjunction with a gong, now you get a nice combination of sounds. Mm -hmm. 
Here's a little bigger piece. Again, you know, it's from a construction site. So not, not only bigger, it's a heavier gauge. Great sounds. And I have this other bigger piece. It's sort of textured, corrugated piece of aluminum. I got this at a club I was playing at way back in about 1975, I think. They were doing some remodeling, and this was just in a pile of scrap, and I've carried it around with me ever since. But this is your typical thunder sheet sort of sound. So another sort of extended technique with just scrap sheet metal as percussion with the gongs by itself. And again, you can go back John Cage using sheet metal in his uh, first construction of metal there. And even further back, if you go back to like vaudeville, early radio, percussionists did all the sound effects. If there was a show, and there were things going on, you needed like horse hoof sounds, you needed thunder, and there you go, thunder sheet. You needed all these different sounds on radio and, you know, live acts like vaudeville and that. Drummers and percussionists would use all sorts of things and, again, extended techniques. So I hope that's given you some ideas, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.